Hemendorf is a uh, very professional and a highly qualified uh, anthropologist. And um, well educated, coming from good university, and also uh, he was well connected to the government. So, with the help of the government, he could have access to the societies he was studying uh, very easily and uh, more intimately. Because somebody coming from the government, particularly during colonial times, uh, would be easily accepted and they would give a lot of data to. His uh, main work was on Nagas and during those days he was uh, being called Viceroy's friend. So, he's a well-connected uh, anthropologist. But first, why did he choose India? Uh, so, let us go to his background. He was born in Vienna in an aristocratic family. And he read uh, uh, Tagore at a very early stage in his life, because of which he developed interest in India. So, out of that interest, he did his doctoral thesis in 1931 on tribes of Assam and Burma from the University of Vienna. Okay. So, he was already exposed to uh, tribes he was going to study. And then he went to London to develop contacts. And there he attended uh, Malinovsky's seminar in London. And uh, so from there, he would have been inspired uh, to think about uh, methods of field work. <clears throat> and participant observation and he came to <clears throat> India in 1936 to do the field work. He chose a particular tribe uh, to work on that was Konyak Nagas. Konyak Nagas. Why did he choose them? Uh, he was, uh, he knew uh, Deputy Commissioner of Naga Hills District by name James Philip Mills. And Mills had already completed the work on Avo and Lotha. So he was an administrator plus ethnographer. And Hemendorf came in touch with Mills when he was in London. And then he met Mills in India. And Mills gave him the governmental support. And Mills or took him on one of his visits as an officer to the Naga villages. 
and uh, it was in that context uh, hemandar chose to study konyak nagas and uh, it was a detailed study and he learned the language within 5 months so then he wrote book after that he moved to uh, work on other tribes uh, he worked on tribes of nepal and also central india uh, let us see the books he wrote the naked nagas 1939 that was the first book and then he moved to uh, telangana areas how did he uh, come to uh, this re the, uh, the, uh, this region um he was from austria see and world war 2 broke out in 1939 and during war 2 he was staying with third reich passport in this british territory so technically he would belong to enemy camp so he was arrested but of course very politely and he was confined to hyderabad state okay um in fact similar thing happened to malnavski but during the world war one time but this is world war 2 and during this time he worked on chinsus and goats and not only this he uh around the same time he got an assignment to work on uh, uh, tribes of arunachal pradesh he studied apatanis in 1944 45 he could get this post due to efforts of elvin and mills and others so he with his government connections he could get an opportunity to study this tribe in nepal uh, in fact it it is not that he wanted to study and the government gave the permission government itself wanted him to uh, study uh, as a part of uh, making uh, them friends for example this was on the basis of an official assignment given to him in 1944 to establish friendly relations with the unadministered hill tribes collect data on general conditions and tribal customs and ultimately explore the upper reaches of uh, suban siri river okay so he did work on nagas and then to telangana region and around the same time nepha an official mission okay uh, because of which he could write these books nikad nagas chinsu rajgund safadlabad the apartanis and the neighbors konyak nagas 
and uh, much later uh, he worked on societies in nepal the share pass of nepal and when uh, technology developed he even made films he made one film the men who hunted heads this was on nagas um so uh, on many tribes he worked what was his uh, approach to his work uh, i think he was so uh, very professional in his attitude uh in the sense that uh, his primary concern was to uh, record uh, of the life of the people which would soon disappear because of spread of colonialism and modernization the naga would change soon many stateless societies around the world were becoming part of the state and they would soon change so hemandar who was interested in recording the truth uh, recently uh, some people are criticizing hemandar's attitude and his neutrality questioning was he really apathetic um, for example hemandar reported what he saw without um, any value judgment uh, for example he accompanied one punitive expedition um to naga hills he joins punitive expedition with mills his friend he wrote that we enter the village and one glance tells us that it has been abandoned smoke still rises from the hearth of the houses and the inhabitants must have dropped everything and run for their lives our dabashi are already running from house to house with burning torches and soon the flames seize dry roofs so when nagas were giving trouble to the british the british were punishing them collectively so on one such expedition hemandar was there and recording the things without any value judgment people who read later thought that this is a very colonial attitude he was unsympathetic but i think hemandar was primarily interested in recording what was going on rather than whether it was right or wrong and much later when the nagas were involved in uh secessionist movement uh, many atrocities were committed on them by the army um hemandar uh, did not say anything on that uh he came back to uh, revisit the nagas in 70s and uh, he Uh, wrote a book in 1976 he published written to the naked nagas an anthropologist view of nagaland 1936 to 1970 so by this time so much of insurgency and related violence took place but hemandar writes uh, that i mean he doesn't mention anything in the book and this is what he said in the book i have refrained from including in this account any comment on the political events which in recent years have disturbed the peace of nagaland 
in the absence of first hand knowledge of the course of events no useful purpose could be served by expressing an opinion so on such an important thing he didn't uh, comment saying in the absence of first hand knowledge but of course he could have got knowledge uh, from talking to others but i think he didn't want to say anything critical either of the government or of the or about the nagas and his attitude uh, is revealing when uh, he is seeking the permission from the bhutan government to study the people of bhutan for example he wrote to the king of bhutan i am very conscious to avoid all political entanglements on no occasion i ever embraced a government which permitted me to work in its territory probably this is the attitude he had towards nagas also he was uh, in the colonial period he was with the colonial government and in the post independence india post independent india he was here with the permission of the indian government so he didn't want to embrace and he was studying the nagas he didn't want to embrace them so you can see the professionalism and concern for truth so to him and our justice would uh, would wait first it is the truth that should be recorded but uh, whenever hemandar was in a position to help the people whom he was studying uh, he was willing to help for example in andhra pradesh um, he was an advisor to hyderabad state government after the war was over and he was asked to look into the problems of rajgonds who live in the present day adilabad district uh, this request was made in the context of martyrdom of kumaram bhim in 1940s uh, so in this context hemandar studied rajgonds and uh, came up with certain suggestions because of which 30000 tribal families are given pattas of 1.6 lakh lakh acres of land and that patta is called hemandar patta it seems and he was also instrumental in opening primary schools with gondi as medium of instruction and he also helped in setting up a teacher training institute okay so i think where where he could help he was helping and where he uh, thought commenting expressing opinion uh, would uh, affect his own work uh, he didn't do so okay um after the war was over he when he taught at usman university between 1945 and 1949 before he moved to uh, london where he taught at the school of oriental and african studies uh during 49 to 76 okay so uh, this is the life of hemandorf dedicated to uh, the study of simple societies and trying to preserve them with as much accuracy as possible um his most famous work is on the nagas we can say that uh, he provided uh, uh, identity to the nagas in the sense that uh, when when nagas looked at themselves or their history uh surprisingly 
they would look at uh, Hemanda's work. Hemanda's work. So Hemandar's work on naked Nagas uh, contributed to making of Naga identity, which is not a an insignificant thing for an anthropologist to uh, shape or influence. Okay. Uh, I was particularly struck by one comment made by um, uh, skill uh, grabber, uh, curator of Museum of Ethnology in Vienna which houses Hemandar's collection of artifacts. Uh, this person uh, also traveled among Nagas. And he said that many of them look at their own past through Hemandar's lenses. And on many occasions he found uh, people pulling the book Naked Nagas many times during his travels. Okay. I am particularly impressed by uh, this observation because uh, uh, I myself visited uh, Nagaland. I was there for a month. My friend was an important uh, government official. He was an IAS officer. And we visited many houses. And it was then I came across this name Hemandorf. And it was then I saw his book, The Naked Nagas. And also, I realized that uh, they were thinking of their own past through Hemandorf's book. So, uh, this person's observation matches with my own uh, impression. So uh, this is this is very 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 real. Uh, so uh, it he made Nagas to think of themselves the way Hemandas reported. Okay, and one Naga scholar, uh, Doli Kikon, uh, says this, Nagas are no longer naked. This is with reference to Hemandar's book, Naked Nagas. But they continue to shed their clothes as symbols of culture and resistance. And in many demonstrations and public gatherings, an increasing number of men dress up as warriors with spears and women with their sarongs wrapped around their chests. Once a sign of barbarism, these bare bodies have become political tools of protest. Okay, so they are asserting now, yes, we are naked Nagas. <laughs> and we are distinct. We are not Indians. We need a, a different political system. We need to govern ourselves. So surely, this is an ins this is not an insignificant contribution uh, from an anthropologist to the society whom he studied. So, you can say it is a very fulfilling career for an anthropologist. <laughs>